Hi, uh, so this is my uh, fifth uh, tutorial class and uh, today we will be considering problem from uh, nonlinear estimation, uh, generalized uh, linear model, dummy variable and also uh, variance uh, stabilizing transformation. So, here is the first problem uh, from uh, nonlinear estimation. So, estimate the parameter alpha and beta in the nonlinear model y equal to alpha plus uh, 0 0.49 minus alpha into e to the power of minus beta x minus 8 plus epsilon. So, this is uh, the nonlinear model we need to fit that means, uh, we have to estimate the parameter alpha and uh, beta from the following observation. So, you are given around 20 observations here and this one is a nonlinear model because of the fact that this is a function, uh, it is it's a nonlinear function of the parameters alpha and beta. Okay. So, now we will be solving this problem. Uh, so, the problem is to estimate alpha and uh, beta of the nonlinear model using the data. Okay. Uh, so, the residual sum of square can be written as as uh, you can say it is residual sum of square or uh, maybe the least square function which is alpha s alpha beta this is equal to y u this is the uh, u th observation uh, and uh, corresponds to the response variable y minus f x u alpha beta. Okay. Uh, sum over u and uh, this is the least square function and we are given this, uh, this is the nonlinear function uh, in alpha and beta. So, I can write this as y u minus alpha minus 0 0.49 minus alpha e to the power of minus beta x u minus 8. Okay. So, this is the nonlinear function we are given uh, and uh, we have to basically estimate alpha and beta uh, in such a way that uh, this uh, least square function is minimum. That is, that is what the least square method is. Uh, now, since uh, the given function f or the model is nonlinear, so all the uh, normal equations are going to be normal and uh, it is very difficult to uh, solve a system of uh, nonlinear equations. So, what we do is that uh, what we have learned in the nonlinear estimation is that we 
approximate this uh, nonlinear function by uh, Taylor series okay? uh, and uh, we approximate this nonlinear function by a linear function. So, here is uh, the so the Taylor series involve uh, the derivative of this function. Uh, let me write down uh, this is called the linearization. So, we linearize this uh, function f x u alpha beta which is equal to alpha plus 0 0.49 minus alpha e to the power of minus beta x u minus 8. So, we, we linearize this nonlinear function by Taylor series and uh, the derivative of this function with respect to alpha is uh, 1 minus e to the power of minus beta x u minus 8 and uh, derivative of this partial derivative with respect to beta is equal to minus 0 0.49 minus alpha e to the power of minus beta x u minus 8. Okay. Now, the Taylor series expansion of this function expansion of f alpha beta uh, about the point alpha naught beta naught is uh, if maybe I should write x u also here uh, x u alpha beta. So, now we write this nonlinear function. Uh, I mean, of course, I mean we approximate this nonlinear function by a linear function uh, using Taylor series, and here is the uh, approximation. So this one is equal to f x u alpha naught beta naught plus d f d alpha at the point alpha naught. So, that is equal to 1 minus e to the power of minus beta beta naught right at the point alpha naught beta naught. So, beta naught uh, x u minus 8 into alpha minus alpha naught plus uh, derivative of this function with respect to beta at the point alpha naught beta naught. So, that is minus 0 0.49 minus alpha alpha naught of course into e to the power of minus beta naught x u minus 8 and then beta minus beta naught. Right? So, <coughs> now you can see that this one is linear in alpha beta. Okay? So, this is a constant term, um, this, is, this one is also constant because we have plugged the value alpha naught beta naught. So, this is linear in alpha beta. Uh, so, we will write this uh, in notation, this one is equal to f u naught plus this partial derivative at the point alpha naught beta naught that we will write at as z 1 u naught and then alpha minus alpha naught plus z 2 u naught beta minus beta naught. Okay. So, 
uh, what we did is that we wrote this nonlinear function uh, using, I mean, we approximate this nonlinear function by a linear function in alpha beta using Taylor series expansion. Okay. So, now <coughs> we have to estimate the parameter alpha and beta for a linear function right and we know how to do it uh, using uh, the multiple linear regression technique or now we can we are in the position to uh, to use ordinary least square technique okay <coughs> well so <coughs> so uh, y u can be written as uh, f u naught plus uh, z 1 u naught into alpha minus alpha naught plus z 2 u not beta minus beta not plus epsilon u. So, this is the uh, I mean the original model now uh, becomes a linear model here and uh, this can be written as of course, uh, as uh, y u minus f u not which is equal to z 1 u naught alpha minus alpha naught plus z 2 u naught beta minus beta naught plus epsilon u. Now, you, here you can see that you know this one is a multiple linear regression model involving two uh, parameter. Well, I would like to uh, write this now in matrix form. So, I um, will write use the notation y naught for uh, response vector. So, y 1 minus f 1 naught and similarly y n minus f n not. Right? Okay. And I will write my uh, z not matrix is for uh, z 1 1 not z uh, 2 1 not. This is for the first observation and similarly uh, z uh, 1 n naught z 2 n naught. So, this is sort of the coefficient matrix and uh, my parameter uh, vector theta naught is equal to alpha minus alpha naught and beta minus beta naught. So, we want to estimate the parameter alpha naught sorry alpha and beta and uh, we approximated this function uh, about alpha naught and beta naught well and we will see you know how to estimate alpha beta because that is what our aim is and epsilon is of course epsilon 1 epsilon 2 up to epsilon n okay uh, i'm sure that you understand what is the meaning of this one See, this one is the partial derivative of the nonlinear function f uh, with respect to alpha at the point alpha naught beta naught. So, this one is basically uh, 1 minus e to the power of minus beta naught into x minus sorry x 1 minus 8 and z 2 1 is basically 
minus 0 0.49 minus alpha naught and uh, x 1 minus 8 e to the power of minus beta naught x 1 minus 8. So, you can see that this is the uh, derivative of the function f with respect to beta at the point alpha naught beta naught. So, similarly you know this one uh, is uh, 1 minus e to the power of minus beta naught uh, x n minus 8 and this one is minus 0 0.49 minus alpha naught uh, x n minus 8 e to the power of minus beta naught x n minus 8. Okay. So, this is what the z naught matrix is and uh, we know that uh, in matrix form this can be now written as uh, y naught is equal to z naught x beta. So, z naught theta naught plus epsilon and uh, we know that then theta naught hat which is equal to z uh, naught prime z naught inverse z naught prime y naught. Okay. So, let me uh, put some more notation also. So, this one I will call uh, alpha minus alpha naught I will call that theta 1. In fact, you know two uh, many notations uh, for this nonlinear estimation. Okay. So, uh, theta 1 naught is basically alpha minus alpha naught theta 2 naught is basically alpha sorry beta minus beta naught. Okay. Uh, well, so we have found the least squared estimate of theta naught. So, this is the least squared estimate. So, what we have observed is that uh, we, we got theta naught hat which is equal to theta 1 naught hat uh, theta 2 naught hat that is alpha 1 minus alpha naught beta 1 minus beta naught. Okay. So, the estimate of all these things. Okay. So, what we do is that uh, if we begin the iteration with the initial guesses say alpha naught equal to 0 0.30 and uh, beta naught which is equal to 0 0.02 then what we do is that actually if we uh, iteratively we improve this uh, alpha beta. Uh, okay. So, the first iteration say 0, we have alpha 0, we took alpha 0 as 0 0.30 and beta 0 as 0 0.02 and we approximated the function about this point alpha naught beta naught using Taylor expansion and we made it linear. So, once we have the uh, linear approximation of the function uh, using the Taylor series, then we use the um, least square technique uh, to uh, estimate the parameters. So, this is how we got the estimation of the uh, least square estimation of the parameters theta and then what we do is that I should not write 1 here. Uh, what we have at this moment is that we have theta 1 
not hat and uh, which is equal to alpha 1 minus alpha naught and also we have theta 2 naught hat which is equal to beta 1 minus not in fact beta alpha 1 it is alpha minus alpha naught, but what we do is that we consider uh, this alpha 1 as improvement of alpha. Now, alpha 1 is uh, alpha naught plus theta 1 naught hat and beta 1 is equal to beta naught plus theta 2 naught hat. Okay, so, uh, we started with alpha naught beta naught and then uh, now the improved value of alpha 1 and beta 1 are in the first iteration they are 0 0.8416 and 0 0.1007 and uh, uh, what we do is that again we uh, now we place this alpha 1 and beta 1. So, we place alpha 1 and beta 1 in the same role as uh, alpha naught beta naught and uh, we go through the same process. So, this will lead to another revised uh, estimate say alpha 2 beta 2 and uh, so on. So, we started with alpha 1 beta 1, now we have sorry we started with alpha naught beta naught, now we have alpha 1 beta 1 and again next step in the next iteration we will have alpha 2 beta 2. Uh, so, at the jth step we will have alpha j plus 1 which is equal to theta 1 j hat plus alpha j and beta j plus 1 which is equal to uh, theta 2 j hat plus beta j. So, we continue this process. Uh, so, this process continue until alpha j plus 1 minus alpha j is less than delta and uh, beta j plus 1 minus beta j is less than delta. So, delta is a pre specified small uh, um, number. So, in our case what we do is that, so at, at this moment we have alpha 1 beta 1 is this, right? this is my alpha naught beta naught. So, I should write here alpha j beta j. So, in the first uh, 0th iteration this is alpha naught beta naught, alpha 1 beta 1 and in the next iteration I will get, uh, you can check that the value of alpha 2 will be 0. 3901 and uh, beta 2 will be 0 0.1004. The third iteration it will be 0 0.3901 and here it is 0 0.1016. In the fourth iteration you will see you know see alpha is not changing. So, 0 0.3901 and 0 0.1016. So, at the fourth stage, so you see that there is no difference between 
the third and uh, uh, fourth uh, step and uh, so alpha 4 minus alpha 3 is less than equal to this quantity I mean similarly beta, beta 4 minus beta 3 is uh, there is in fact no difference it is 0. So, uh, we, can, we can stop here. Well, so this is the first example uh, from the um, um, nonlinear estimation. Next, we will consider a problem from uh, dummy variables. So, dummy variables are uh, utilized to um, separate uh, blocks of data. So, here is an example. Uh, look at this data. I do not know whether to fit uh, two straight line, one straight line or what. So, we have two sets of data set A and set B and uh, we do not know whether to fit a one straight line to all the data together or two straight line uh, or what we do not know. So, he has two sets of x y data given below which cover the same x range. How do you resolve this dilemma? Describe and uh, give model details and things he needs to do. Okay. So, we have learned the use of uh, dummy variable. So, we will be fitting a general model involving uh, two dummy variables including say z naught for this problem. So, if we attach a dummy variable z to distinguish the two groups we can look at all four possibilities okay you understood what i mean by four possibilities okay uh, well, so the general model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus z into alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus epsilon. So, z is equal to 0 for set A and it is 1 for set B. Okay, and this can be written of course, as beta naught plus beta 1 x plus alpha naught z plus alpha 1 z x plus epsilon. So, this is the model we are going to fit and uh, you can see that here it is a multiple linear regression model and uh, what is the x matrix here? The x matrix uh, has 1, 2, 3, 4 column. So, the first column is all 1 of course and let me put z uh, naught I can put also here or x naught or let me put only 1 here and then I have I will have a column for x, I will have a column for z and I will have a column for z x. Okay. Uh, so, first set has four observations and the observations are 8, 0, 12, 2. So, I will put them 8, 0, 12, 2 and for the first set uh, set A my z is equal to 0. So, 0, 0, 0, 0 and then z x is of course all 0. Right? 
So, this is for first set and for the second set 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, you can check that the x values are 9, 7, 8, 6 and for the second set or set B z is equal to 1. So, I will put z equal to 1, 1, 1, 1 and then of course, z x is equal to 9, 7, 8, 6. So, this is what the what my x matrix is in matrix notation. Of course, you know uh, I, 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 I am sure that you understand the difference between this x and this x. Well, so the model can be uh, now uh, written as y equal to x beta plus epsilon and of course, this beta vector is beta naught, beta 1, alpha naught. Okay? So, this beta is beta naught, beta 1, alpha naught, alpha 1. So, you know how to fit this model, this beta hat is equal to just x prime x inverse x prime y. Okay, so, let me write down the fitted model now. So, the fitted model is y hat equal to 1.142 plus 0 0.506 x minus 0 0.0418 z minus 0 0.036 x z. So, this is my uh, fitted model. Now, the question is uh, whether a single straight line is sufficient. If there is not much uh, difference uh, in the response level, we can go for a single straight line fit, uh, but we need to uh, see one we have the general model. Now, we can test uh, uh, whether this is uh, ok. I mean one single line is sufficient for that what we have to test is that we have to test the hypothesis H naught that alpha naught equal to alpha 1 equal to 0. Okay? Because we have considered the general model is this one. Now, if I test to test that whether a single straight line is enough, we have to test that alpha naught is equal to alpha 1 equal to 0. And you know how to test this right? Um, using the extra sum of square technique. So, f statistics is s s regression for the full model right? minus s s regression for the restricted model. right? So, the restricted model does not involve uh, these two terms. Uh, okay. And this by degree of freedom uh, 2 by m s residual. Uh, before doing all these things, you know, just I will uh, construct the ANOVA table, ANOVA table for the full model. The source uh, total there are 8 observations, the degree of freedom is 7 and the regression has uh, uh, 4 parameters. So, uh, it will be 3 and the residual has uh, degree of freedom 4. Okay. Now, the restricted model has only 2 parameters. So, uh, this will have degree of freedom 1. So, 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 and uh, you can check that this is equal to 0 0.1818 by 2 by uh, MS residual is uh, 0 0.3272 by 4 which is equal to 1.11. Now, this f has degree of freedom 2, 4. Now, compute the uh, sorry, you just check the tabulated value of f, f 0, 5, uh, 2, 4 is equal to 6.94. So, my observed value 
a f which is equal to 1.11 is smaller than this one. That means, uh, h naught is accepted, h naught is accepted. That means, uh, we can go for a single state line fit. Okay. Uh, so, this is in the problem I wanted to discuss for um, from a uh, dummy variable uh, topic and we have another problem uh, involving dummy variable. So, it says that an experimenter has two sets of data of x y type and wishes to fit a quadratic equation to each set. She also wishes to test if the two quadratic fits might be identical in location and curvature, but have different intercept values. Explain how would you set this up for her. Okay. So, what she has is that she has two sets of data on x and y and she wants to fit quadratic equation. So, she should go for the general model like uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus beta 1 1 x square plus z alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 1 1 x square plus epsilon. So, of course, you, you know that z equal to 0 for set A and 1 for set B. Now, she wants to check whether she can go for two quad, uh, parallel uh, quadratic fit uh, for testing two parallel quadratic What do you mean by parallel quadratic? They have the same location and curvature, uh, only they differ in the intercept. What you have to test is that you have to test whether alpha 1 is equal to alpha 1 1 is equal to 0. So, you test the hypothesis that alpha 1 ma equal to alpha 1 1 equal to 0. For test for testing two parallel quadratic fit, this one is appropriate. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you understand uh, how to uh, how to test this hypothesis using uh, extra sum of square technique, right? Now uh, I'll be considering a problem from uh, uh, from a topic called uh, transformation and uh, uh, weighting to correct model inadequacy and there we talked about uh, uh, variance stabilizing transformation. So, I will be considering one problem from variance uh, stabilizing transformation. Well, here is the problem consider the simple uh, linear regression model y i equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon i, where the variance of epsilon i is proportional to x i square. That is the variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma square x i square. So, this is this means the assumption of constant variance is not satisfied. Okay. So, usually if epsilon i follow epsilon i the variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma square and then we go for uh, the ordinary least square technique, but that is not true here uh, variance is changing uh, for different i and it is proportional to x i square. Suppose that uh, we use the transformation y prime which is equal to y by x and x prime which is equal to 1 by x 
is this a variance stabilizing transformation okay first solve this uh, problem okay so we start with the model y i equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon i. Then I am considering the transformation y i to y i by x i and then the model becomes beta naught by x i plus beta 1 plus epsilon i x i. Right. So, if I call this as y i prime, then y i prime is equal to beta naught and my x i prime is 1 by x i plus beta 1 plus epsilon i prime. And so, this is the transformed model. Now, you can check in this transform model variance of epsilon i prime is equal to variance of epsilon i by x i and we know that variance of epsilon i is sigma square x i square and then by x i square. So, now the variance of transform error e i prime is constant. So, yes. So, the answer to the first problem is that uh, yes, uh, it is a, a variance uh, stabilizing transformation. What are the relation between the parameters in the original and the transform model? Well, uh, what is the relation? I hope that the relation is, so here you can see the, this is my transform model. So, the slope in the original model becomes intercept in the transform model and the intercept in the original model becomes slope in the transform model. I mean that is what I feel so. Uh, next, uh, the next problem is that uh, suppose we use the model of sorry, suppose we use the method of weighted least square with uh, w i is equal to 1 by x i square. Uh, please recall what is weighted least square. Is this equivalent to the transformation introduced in part 1? I mean considering weighted least square with this weight, is it same as the transformation we considered in the in part 1? So, that is the question. So, you have to recall what is weighted least square. Okay. Let me uh, solve this problem. Uh, so, what is weighted least square? Weighted least square is uh, about finding the least square estimate of regression coefficients, but we consider the weighted least square function. to uh, estimate the parameters. So, the weighted least square function, least square function is uh, S say beta naught beta 1. So, what we do in the usual case is that we just minimizing this uh, SS residual that is y i minus beta naught minus beta 1 x i square i from 1 to n. So, this is the SS residual uh, or so we minimize this quantity to we estimate beta naught and beta 1 in such a way that this is minimum that is what the origin ordinary least square technique is. Now, in the weighted least square we put a weight for the ith observation that is w i and here uh, part C of that problem or part 3 of the problem, it says that the weight is 1 by x i square that is 1 by x i square. So, w i is 1 by x i square which is equal to y i minus beta naught 
beta 1 x i square. So, this is the weighted least square function and this can be written as y i by x i minus beta naught x i minus beta 1 whole square. So, using the weighted least square technique, we will estimate the parameter beta naught and beta 1 such that this is minimum this is what the weighted least square technique suggest. Now, the question says whether uh, this is equivalent to the transformation introduced in the in part 1. Now, in part 1, so this is the transformation we considered. So, here to compute beta naught and beta 1, we here you can see that the epsilon dash is it is a constant variance. So, we can go for ordinarily ordinary least square technique and the function we will minimize is uh, say call it s star beta 1 sorry beta naught beta 1. So, this is equal to this is equal to y i prime minus beta naught x i prime minus beta 1. So, we will minimize this to estimate beta naught and beta 1. Now, you can see that you know this one is equal to this one is nothing but y i by x i minus beta naught by x i minus beta 1. See, yeah. So, uh, we are minimizing. Now, we can see that this 2 uh, here, this is the uh, least square function for the ordinary least square and this is the weighted least square function for the weighted least square. Now, you can see that both are same. This one is same as this one. Uh, so, uh, the function we are considering in the transform model to estimate beta naught and beta 1 is the same as the function we are considering uh, to estimate beta naught and beta 1 using weighted least square technique. So, answer to the uh, problem um, part 3 is uh, is this equivalent? The answer is yes, it is equivalent. Okay. So, this is one problem uh, we considered from the variance stabilizing transformations and uh, next I uh, will be uh, considering one more problem. Uh, this problem is uh, from um, generalized linear model technique. Okay. Well, so this problem says that suppose we have n observations of variables x1, x2, xk, y, where x, x are regressive variable and y is a response variable. And the question is if y i's are Poisson variable with mean mu y, what type of analysis is feasible? So, the objective of the generalized uh, linear model topic was if uh, the response variable is not following normal distribution, but it fall if, if the response variable follows some distribution uh, from the uh, exponential family, then uh, how to fit a model for that. So, that was the objective of uh, generalized uh, linear model and here you can see that uh, this uh, response variable y uh, follows Poisson distribution. So, Poisson distribution is a member of uh, uh, exponential uh, family. So, 
we will see how to solve this uh, problem. Okay. So, y follows Poisson with uh, mean mu y and then we know that this uh, probability mass function of y can be written as f y mu which is equal to exponential y ln mu we can check this minus mu minus ln y factorial and here uh, b theta or b mu I should write maybe is ln mu which is the natural parameter which is the natural parameter. Okay, what we have learned in this uh, topic uh, called uh, generalized linear model is that uh, um, how to fit a model uh, when the response variable uh, is not normal. So, the variation in y i could be explained in terms of the regressors value. So, what model we fit that we fit the model some g mu i equal to x i prime beta. So, which is equal to beta 1 x i 1 plus beta 2 x i 2 plus say beta k x i k. Right? And this g mu is the link function which is nothing but the natural parameter that is ln mu i. So, the model we go for is that ln mu i is equal to x i prime beta. So, this can be written as mu i is equal to e to the power of x i prime beta. Okay and uh, which is nothing but uh, expectation of y i. So, that is mu i which is equal to e to the power of x i prime beta. Okay. So, this is the model we need to fit if the response variable follow Poisson distribution. Okay. And, uh, Usually, what we fit is that if the y follow normal distribution, then we fit the model E y i is equal to x i prime beta. But if it is following Poisson, then we follow we fit this model, and uh, and uh, if it is follow if if y follows uh, say binomial, then depending on the natural parameter, uh, we get the uh, model to be fitted. Okay. So, uh, I have tried to you know uh, cover problem from different topics uh, I um, considered in this course and uh, that is all. So, we need to uh, stop now. Uh, thank you.